Hey everyone, this is Chris Keys for Premier Guitar, hanging out at the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville, Tennessee. Special special treat for myself today, maybe Perry too, is uh, got the guys from Manchester Orchestra. Thank Robert's you for here. Us, man. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for uh, taking the time on this holiday weekend. I want to talk is guitars. Is it still the holiday weekend? I think so. It's Sunday. I don't think we have weekends on tour. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but you're at a special place, the Mother Church, on yes. Sunday, so that's cool. Uh, let's talk guitars, man. Let's dive into what you use. Uh, okay. And what's your number one that you probably play the most? The Sheriff. Uh, it's a 72 Deluxe reissue. And uh, I think I had the Custom, the one with the thinner and no humbucker down here. And then just over time switched to this just so it's beefier. Okay. And I've probably been through like five or six of them. And this one, this one's better than this one. Can't tell you why, it just is. Yeah. Um, so how, just, how did you get that one? How did you come up to, to own it? Um, I want to say Andy actually got it. Oh, all right. He didn't like it, which is actually the story of a lot of our guitars. Really? Is we'll see one, I'll get it, and then he'll want it, and I'll see his, and I want his, and we, we'll trade. Yeah, which I was is, say you do swaps. Which we did with the Jazzmaster and the Coronado as well. Fair enough. That's cool that you guys keep the guitars in the family one way or another. Oh, yeah. I'm a strong believer in never let anything outside of the family yeah if you own it please don't sell it because it makes a unique sound yeah and uh what do you like about the humbucker you said the beefiness but do you ever use the one in the neck the neck humbucker i do um it's great for when you need to just like sit in the background it's an easy and this is so much easier than reaching down here yeah and switching over it's just kind of a guitar that never breaks stays in tune sounds good and so for the studio we'll use whatever works best for the track but mm -hmm. for tour you need reliable won't break stays together and sounds good every yeah. night that's what you're telling us that before we we're trying to negotiate making the shoot happen publicist was just saying like these guys are they're, they're gearheads or they like guitars but they're, they're they they do not really have exciting gear and i'm like well that's kind of the the charm of the band yeah. is that you guys are utilitarian and you use what you know what works and what's going to stay in tune yeah i think there's a there's a fine line of in the studio go crazy use the weirdest stuff but on stage you got to keep the show moving yeah so if you're changing every song at least for us if we're changing every songs we get kind of like out of the swing of things yeah. i'd rather just move forward keep there, playing a rock show there's a real flow to your guys's music especially live i know that you and andy did the swiss army men mm -hmm. soundtrack so you guys already have that natural element the progression of a song but in a live setting it really just flows and that's something that you guys don't really break yeah that, uh, that score actually, with our most recent record, got us to really connect all the songs and have them segue into each other. So we're trying to do that live to where there'll be a break once yeah. in an hour type thing. That's other cool. than that, it's just moving forward. Uh, I appreciate that. Now, one thing I don't see that I have associated with you uh, is the SG. Tuning. Really? I use it in the studio. <laughs> I can't keep that thing in tune on tour. So. Uh, that's what's great about these is they can kind of blend in and cover a lot of different tones. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that SG was, that was my like mean everything to simple math era guitar. Um, but just, it's tough. It's a tough <laughs> one. I love it to death, but. It's a love-hate relationship. Yeah, exactly. And so this other Tele Deluxe, is that, is that just kind of a backup for the main yeah. one? Okay. It's and the, you know when it all comes falling down we've got that to this <laughs> safety election, net yeah and what's the jazz master for the jazz um i got this right before we did a black mile and andy got this and when we started writing the way we were playing wasn't working on the guitar so we just naturally switched and this is hands down the most stable guitar i've ever used in my really? entire life it can stay in a case for two weeks. You take it out, still in tune, throw a capo on it, still working. I've broken this switch seven or eight times, but other than that, it's it's a beast. That's amazing, because I don't want to call bullshit, Robert, but jazz masters are typically pretty finicky. Uh, the not tuning to the one, bridge, that's not, cool. Yeah. You found a winner. Um, Is there any songs that you typically use it for versus the Tele Deluxe? I use this, I use this on the entire new record okay. and all of our new songs. Um, and it's great live, just, I don't really know how jazz masters work, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> um, <does>. yeah. <laughs> I know that this little thing gives me control up here. So you can really like do a guitar change mid song if you need. Yeah. Just brightening it up drastically, going, you know, thick, warm, 
like low mid stuff. It's it's an easy control guitar. Cool. And it's ox blood red, and that's badass. yeah, and the matching head socks. Killer. Yeah, I love it. Cool, man. Well, let's breeze through Andy's gear too, as well, since we're here. Uh, I know that Andy's big Telecaster dude. Yes. But uh, there's some funkiness with it. Yeah, um, there's nothing in it. <laughs> I was telling Perry this. I was like, he's got nothing in it. Um, yeah, I think in 2009, um, it had a coil tap or something right here. And every show, it would just cut the side of your hand. So we had a guy take it out. And when he went from, I think this is a little 50... 59? 59 okay. pickup. Uh, from we Seymour can't Dumping. really tell yeah. because it's, it's rusted over. Corroded. So we went straight to the output jack, and I guess bypassing everything it made the guitar 25 percent louder now the one thing that i would ask about that and i know that you probably control dynamics with your volume knob and playing attack but i mean how how would you say that andy would do that since he has no it's no safety he, net uh, is it just a plane no he attacks his right foot on the volume pedal uh, probably like 70 percent of the time gotcha. he's singing um and does that cover most of the material and the coronado is kind of filling in or is it a backup coronado is also pretty it's the like newer record okay. we both stuck with the exact same guitars and sounds for like nine ten years and then this last record was the first time that we kind of switched it Branched up out and uh, what strings are you guys using are you guys loyal to any brand or a gauge or yeah just... we're ernie ball cool purple 11 to 48 all right is that something you've always kind of been in that range or you've been... yeah okay yeah you're just comfortable with that yeah any smaller and I feel like a monster, any heavier, <laughs> and I feel weak. <laughs> You've found the perfect middle ground, yes. man. Let's go talk amps and pedals. Cool, let's do it. Robert, talk to me about your amps. You got two of them sitting here, but looks like only one's live. Yeah, um, so for a while I did a ABY setup into this, and this OR50, and I had a Marshall cab with it, and then the orange died on me one day. And so in sound check, we were trying to use the Vox, and it it sounded like a Vox, which sounds great, but it didn't have that thickness, the closed back cap with mm -hmm. it. So I ended up running parallel out of the Vox into the Marshall and having the Celestians up top, the beefiness down below mm -hmm. kind of covered the entire full spectrum. But what we didn't realize is this doesn't do well powering six speakers. Yeah. Um, so I met with the people from Janus Cabs and they built me this 212. Um, it's pretty big too. Yeah. Um, so now it just kind of, and if you notice, it's just directly in front of my pedal board. Yeah. I get hit right in the, uh, the ass with that. And then the <laughs> top end I get to hear up here. So it's kind of just my full spectrum of sound. Cool. And, and with the orange, uh, I got to ask with the tinfoil, what's, what's behind that um, application? Joe Canetti in 2009 or 10 put that on because we had some radio frequencies at Lollapalooza. And why would you take it off? No, yeah. Just clean it up. I mean, I got tinfoil on my bunny ears at home yeah. with the TV, so it's <laughs> same thing. And is there anything that you've done to the, to the Vox or uh, anything special or change it or is it stock to what you know? Um, I, powering these with it definitely kind of makes the gain threshold break up in a little different way but it's not modded it's just you know out of the box plug in a lot of our tone isn't there's not thought behind it yeah it's plugging shit in until you're like that's what i want it to sound like and then you just <laughs> go with it <laughs> well in that regard we got kind of the bass tone here pedals what do you got at the pedal board that people uh, can see in here when you're on stage um okay um i'll start backwards because my pedal board is kind of backwards um <laughs> I spend so much time in the studio that I'm used to having a fader or an attenuant mm -hmm. at the end of everything. So I keep my volume pedal last because it's too normal. I've got volume on my guitar. I don't yeah. need two things doing that. And so that allows me to choke it and kill it like that rather than killing anything with a tail on it, worrying about feedback or hum or anything like that. Um, so that's probably the weirdest thing about my pedal board <laughs> but uh other than that it starts with this full tone full drive 2 which uh it's just you know it's a brighter overdrive pedal um i rarely use this the extra boost on it just because it's starts to crap out a little bit yeah and then this small sound big sound mini is great um 
because what I do with this is it doesn't actually push the amp any harder. I'm just pushing the gain in the pedal, catching it with this, and then you can fine tune it with the bias. So it kind of switches, rather than making your amp break up more, it switches tone for you oh. some. And then uh, we'll get to Brady Land at Old Blood Noise. Yeah, Brady um, writes for us, so he's a good dude. Yes, I love him. If you don't know his stuff, you should check it out because yeah. it's amazing. Uh, this is the haunt, and the thing I love about it is this gate, when you just barely have it on, it makes it sound like your speaker is about to rip open, <laughs> which is kind of the goal for every big guitar tone. Yeah. You want it to sound like Raunchy everything's hell. breaking. Yes. Um, and then when we get to this little dude, the reflector, um, it just kind of messes shit up for me. Um, I used I used the chorus aspect of it on uh, a couple songs on the new record, but this guy, when you pitch it up all the way, it's two octaves up almost, so it's perfectly out of tune and yeah. messed up. So it's a great kind of effect to uh, make people uncomfortable uh -huh. in the song. Like. Yeah. And then uh, this is a pedal people aren't going to be familiar with. I've never heard of the company. Um, it's Electro Harmonics Holy Grail. Um, it's this thing I started using called Reverb. Um, and it kind of takes the sound and makes it a little longer for you. Gosh, um, people are going to really trip out on that. I know, I know. Um, but this is, you know, what I typically use for the reverb. Uh, the Procession, which has this almost like choral brightness to the tail. Mm. Um, so rather than just having your spring type thing, it adds uh, like angelic side to it. And then this hold function helps, as we were saying, we try and transition the entire set together. It allows me to grab certain sounds, certain chords, mm. and just have it hold out and continue. So that's basically how I use the whole thing. One thing I wanted to ask is, is like with a song like Mansion, where it has like a heavy reverb and then, and then I don't even know if you've played it live in this set, but it, there's where it crescendos into like mayhem. Mm -hmm. How would how did you maybe get that on the record? But how would you make that live? On the record, it was a memory man, a holy grail. So and, you doubled up the reverbs. Yeah, and something else. Um, but live, um, that's what's, you can kind of get the bass with this. So mm -hmm. you start to get the swell, and then you can play around underneath it so you can get your bed and then riff over top of it gotcha. with that and then with you know, i assume when you have like you're bringing it like with a song like pride or shake it out when it's getting this, its heaviest what would be the pedals or pedals engaged or is it just volume pedal down and you know amp goose um if it's a song off cope it's going to be this guy okay um and then Typically, it's one of these two booster overdrives. Um, this is better for lead stuff where it needs to cut over. Mm -hmm. um, and this is kind of good for just chunking it up. Keeping More it big and loud. Stuff. Yeah. Cool. Killer, Robert. Well, thank you take, for taking us through your gear. Uh, we'll just breeze through Andy's real quick and we'll yeah, let, you let's do of, it. let you out of your duties. All right, Robert. Uh, looks like he's got just two DeVilles over there. Yeah, the DeVilles are, you know, the Standard. ones you can get at Guitar Center. Yeah. Um, and then right in the pedal board here. Yep, so right into here, that makes up for the uh, lack of guts that's in his Telecaster. So uh, yep. he definitely uses that a lot, um, just dynamically, to move through the set. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that just goes right into his blues driver, which just sounds like your typical blues driver. Yeah, and is it something that's on, you would say, a lot? Or is it just kicked on for s certain parts? Or is it kind of like always I, pushing it? I, I would say anytime it's, you know, not finger picking or mm. um, if it's a full barred chord, that guy's probably going to be on. Gotcha. So it's definitely a part of his tone, but there's also times where it'll be on and it'll be at like half power mm. or halfway with the volume pedal. Gotcha. Um, and then he's also got one of those holy grails I was talking about. Yeah, I saw that <laughs> you had yours on spring and he has his on plate. Is that, is that uh, by design? Nope. It's probably not on plate. It's, uh, you can't move the switch anymore. <laughs> um, it's probably stuck on spring. And, okay. uh, and then this is another one of these old blood. Um, I forget what that one. I think it's a black fountain. Yeah. Um, which is a delay, I think. Yes. Yeah. Um, 
So we, uh, he never really messed with any delay. And when we were writing, I think the silence up at the cabin, um, we just had, you know, boxes of pedals that we took from the studio. And that's the first song where in writing, I didn't play guitar. I went straight to keys. So mm -hmm. he was trying to change his tone up a little bit and use that. And it, uh, I think it's just like a quarter note delay on it. Yeah, and, it's but it's, basic. Yeah, basic, but as with most of their pedals, they take basic and add a little flair to it to where, you know, it's not just a typical delay. Mm -hmm. It trails a little bit, has a unique tone Some to it. Some warbles to it. Yeah. Well, dude, I uh, appreciate you. One last question before, because you mentioned it was like, what was the kind of experience recording in the, that setting in the cabin where you guys were just kind of hunkered down? Well, uh, we spent like, three three week periods up there where we'd leave this mountain probably once a week uh -huh. um which makes you a little crazy yeah um but we were so connected to that cabin and everything that we knew we couldn't make the record in atlanta so there's a studio echo mountain that's right at the bottom probably like two miles from where we we're and similar to this like you've got windows you know coming in it's an old church so there's it kind of took us directly from that cabin to that and just making a record, writing a record in daylight and then recording a record in daylight. It's the first and only time we've ever done that. Usually we're vampires yeah. just like anytime <laughs> the sun's out. Um, so it was amazing. That's cool. Would you say it had a, a, a like an impact on the music? I mean, it, I must have. Absolutely. Uh, the sunlight or? The sunlight, the daylight, <laughs> yeah. just like recording in that situation. Yeah. just makes you less cranky and <laughs> if you're less cranky then you're gonna be willing to go a little further um but i there were a couple times where the sun would be setting it'd be six o'clock and we'd be on take 40 of a song and it'd hit the windows and come in and there's an immediate like shift in everyone's vibe yeah you know it's nature's inspiration basically Magic hour, right? Yeah, sunset. exactly. Cool, man. I appreciate you, Robert. Thank you so much for taking Thank the time you, my man. and for not being cranky. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Last but certainly not least, bass man Andy. Andy, how you doing? Good, man. Thank you for uh, taking the time to talk to us about your gear. Yeah, it's sure. Treat. So uh, I've I've seen you many times on stage with the red one. Tell me about that one. That one's a, a beauty. This is uh, it's a special guitar. This so a guy built this for me a long time ago in my hometown, Pensacola. A guy named Tony Martinez, which has passed away. Um, but it's the workhorse, and I can't find another guitar to sound like this. It's, it's lighter. It's an old '80s body. Okay. It's a '50s style P bass neck. Um, everything on it's. Uh, I, I, well, my grandfather had a bass like this. He was a bass player, and mm -hmm. he had a red and gold Fender, and he sold it and now no one knows where it is. And so I recreated the red and gold with this as a tribute. It's cool. But um, there's bass lens pickups, which are like the highest output passive pickups that I could find at the time. It's just a rock and roll bass. Yeah. And, and actually it has good tone too. If you're playing with fingers and you're doing something that's a little more subtle, it's nice too. It's just really versatile. Cool. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been through quite a lot. It's not, not in mint condition as you yeah, can see. Clearly. It's been broken here. Um, How did you manage to do that? Um, just got a little excited. <laughs> do you remember what gig it was? Um, it was in a festival in New York, okay. and it was the end of the show. And I don't. There's a picture of it somewhere, but I just kind of threw it behind me <laughs> after a song, and I didn't see it because we walked off stage. Yeah. And then the next day, it came out of the case, and it was in half. And Oof. I was like, no. And. Uh, Actually, the guys from Jack White's crew, they were playing the same festival as us, and they fixed it for me. That's cool. So, And uh, would you say that's kind of your main base in terms of like uh, set time, maybe 50% more than that? Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, through the set, uh, there's so many different tunings that I have to have different bases. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I would use it the whole time. Gotcha. So my, the search is to find one that has that. It's like one of those special guitars that, that would be irreplaceable if it yeah. ever got lost or stolen. But I have found this is a new one that I have that has the same 50 style neck. That's uh, brand spanking new. It looks. It's brand new. It's the closest thing I've got uh, to this in tone yet, and it's. I really love these wide uh, 50 style necks, 
I don't know. A lot of people get like to have smaller, closer, you know, even Mustang bases that are easy to play, but mm -hmm. I like them spread out. I like the strings spread out, especially for like the style that we're playing. Because mm -hmm. you can kind of lay into it and you're not going to miss and hit another yeah. string. They're like this far <laughs> apart, so yeah. And uh, I imagine the red one's kind of your main studio dog then? It is. Yeah. Yeah. There's different tones too though, you know, in the studio there's I have a Rickenbacker at home and I have uh, SG at the studio and different things that are, are fun to mess with. And um, But as far as it's like, it's like you try all these different tones and then we end up going back to, you know, to the OG. All red, yeah. yeah. And is, are the pickups the same or are those like Fender pickups? These are standard Fender pickups. Okay. These are going to be different, which is kind of tough too because there is a slight volume difference when you plug one in live and you get a guitar switch or like, mm -hmm over here trying to you know turn it back yeah. up and, and match your volume so we're still working on that uh, and, what a, uh, oh sorry to cut you off but uh, yeah. what bass strings do you run um these are ernie ball and um 50s and that's been pretty standard um for a long time now i don't know there's it, honestly I, I change strings almost every show too. really yeah. Yeah, it's not. I know that I, sounds weird, and no. people be like, "What?" You know, but there's there's a certain edginess that you know that I use as far because a lot of my my stuff is overdriven, mm -hmm. and I, I want that edgy cutting sound every show. Yeah. And if it's if it's a little bit dead, because you'll sweat all over it and, and kill the strings in one show. Mm -hmm. So. Cool. And then you kind of already alluded to the head here uh, in regards to trying to find out and match the sound. Yes. So uh, talk to me about this spaceman. Super so, basement. so the, yeah, this is the Super Basement, 300 watt tube, um, and it is a beast. And it's been awesome because it's replaced all of my overdrive pedals that I've been through. Really? Yeah, I've been. I used to play like try anything that would have the, uh, a cutting edge that I needed, but was still with warmth. Like I did an OCD through a Sansamp and tried all these different. Mm -hmm. I could go through the list of, of overdrives that I've tried to make work, and this, it's not healthy for the amp, <laughs> because what I do is I use, this This is your first channel on this side, and it's clean, mm -hmm. and you have a foot switch on your pedal board that switches over to your second channel, and I have this completely gained out, completely blended on 10, and it is the crunchiest, I wish we could make noise right now and show you, but it's... It's the crunchiest, most perfect overdrive. And it burns the tubes out quick because it's so hot. Are you changing them out a lot? Yeah, but it's, it's so worth it. And we have a backup <laughs> head in case it happens. It really is, man. And uh, that, it's cool too because you can, you know, usually if you get an overdrive pedal, you're gonna zap all of your low end yeah. when you kick it on. And this, you can come over and adjust, you know, anything from bass, all your mid levels and treble until it's perfect. And then you leave it, stomp it between clean and dirty, mm -hmm. and it's juicy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the only thing you have on your pedal board, as you said, you got rid of all the dirt boxes, was uh, the space cycle. How do you use that? Yeah, so I do some delay stuff, but I also use it a lot for noise. You can just hold it down, and, and it songs. and it sounds like. A space echo, <laughs> you know, as much as like the old tape machines, yeah. that's a remake of it, and it's it sounds very similar, like eerily similar. Hmm. So um, a lot of transitional stuff, but it depends. So if I, I use it some for Manchester, but also I'm playing with the opener band mm. on this tour, and I use just just as a normal delay in that. It's really fun. <laughs> Cool. Well, appreciate it, Andy. Lean and mean is the name of the game with you guys. I, I, I dig it. Yeah, Rock man. and roll. Dude, thanks so much. Thank man. you so yep. much. Chris Keys for Premier Guitar. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the latest Rig Rundown. Guess what? Every week we upload a brand new Rig Rundown to PremierGuitar.com a full week before it's available here on YouTube. So to get your gear fix as soon as humanly possible, go to PremierGuitar.com forward slash Rig Rundown. And while you're there, be sure to sign up to get an email notification so you're the first to know as soon as each week's new rig rundown is available. Cheers. See you soon.